Okay, this is the um, 2016 to 17 inventor test, and I'm just going to complete it um, and show you the steps you could take to make each of these to complete each of these tasks. So the first one is this part that we have to make. Um, just sort of taking a couple of seconds to look at it and and work out roughly what's going on. It's some kind of a disc with a hole in it, um, and then it has these um, further extruded shapes. So I think I'll start by making this disc, and then I'll add this disc, and then I'll add this disc, and then I'll start cutting things away. And then finally, I can see that the complicated bit is probably going to be this um, two times threads here that you can see here. So I'll work on that last just on a kind of prioritization basis. Um, so I'll say a new standard millimeter eye part and that's ready to go. I'll start to sketch. I'm going to sketch this on the XY plane um, and the first thing that I need is a circle of diameter 98 millimeters and that's a diameter not a radius. So I'll check happy with that. Okay, <coughs> and now I will extrude that circle to a depth of 15. Good. Uh, now I'll sketch on there the next circle which I can see has a diameter of 67. And that is, uh, the total height to the top of that is 20. We've already got 15, so the difference is five. And then there's one more circle that makes up the kind of basic shape that we're dealing with. Um, so we'll start to sketch on there. Circle. Same center as before, and this one has external radius of, uh, sorry, diameter of 40. And in terms of its extruded height, uh, it goes in total to 36 millimeters, and we've already got 20 millimeters, so that's going to be 16 millimeters. So that's uh, what we're starting with. Now there are three uh, steps cut into that. Uh, the first one I'll do uh, off this face and again it's a circle. Uh, 26 millimeters diameter and that is an extrude cut which goes all the way through. That's what I'll do there. Next on this face there's a second extrusion which looks to me like it's got a diameter of 60. That's in the right hand image. circle there but the one I want is the one with the diameter of 60 and that's extruded to a depth of 15. Well to be honest I can't see that on the diagram at the moment. It's just short of the 15. Uh, let me pull the diagram over and show you what I'm looking at here. I'm interested in what's going on in this figure here. I'm making the whole that goes around there and it just doesn't reach that step at 15 millimeters from the base. So I'm going to make it 14 then I can always come back and think about that again if I need to. Uh, finish sketch, extrude, cut, 14. Okay. And there's one more cut uh, which is on that face. 
turn that here. That needs to be 30. And the total height that that goes to is 30 millimeters. Um, so given that it started at 14, I'm going to extrude it another 16. OK. So that is now the basic shape that I want. Um, is there any information here about fillets? Um, I'll come back and think about fillets. Let's also put in some um, holes. Um, these are on a radius of 40, diameter of 80, so I'm just going to make a construction circle for that. Um, and I guess I'll make a construction line as well to that circle and so the place I want to, the point I want to center everything on is there um, it looks like this is a specified hole um, so maybe actually I, I didn't really want to do that sketch. Um, I'm going to finish that sketch and, and actually delete it. That's not helping me, I think. What I'm going to do instead, um, looking again at the diagram, I want these holes to be on the back. Um, so I will I will do a sketch uh, on this face and I'll put in a circle of diameter 80. Uh, I haven't made that a construction circle, so I will now. Um, I'll put in a line that goes up to here. Again, I'll make that construction. And what I want to do is to put a point on there. And if I finish that sketch, uh, what I should be able to do now is add in a hole at that point. Um, and the hole we want is... flat point with an, a diameter there of 13.5 and a diameter there of 5 sorry a, a height there of 8 and a lower diameter of 5 I'm reading all of that off the right hand side of the diagram um, Needs more information, and it's the termination that it needs. And I guess I'll make the termination face that one. And if I look at that, that looks pretty good. That's the hole I wanted. And uh, now what I can do is do a circular pattern on that hole. So the feature is that one. The rotation axis will any of the circular axes will do um, and I want four of them spread around 360 degrees okay I've got those holes looking pretty nice now um, next up let's have the other holes which are at 45 degrees uh, to those holes that I've drawn and they're on this face here so um, I'll do a construction line, uh, well actually first I'll do a circle, these are at radius 27, so that's diameter 54, uh, so they're on that circle, and as I say they're at 45 degrees, I'm just going to move that 54 out of the way a bit, um, and now what I'll do is align to that circle, make that 45 and put in a point there. Finish sketch and we'll add in a hole 
and these are just a diameter for through holes and there's no more information about what we want uh, so I can say that's okay and again I'll circular pattern that hole on that Try again, circular pattern, that hole, the rotation axis, so I can choose anything that goes around the axis I want, and I want four of those holes. Um, good, that's now approximately as it should be, and it's starting to look there quite similar to what's in the diagram on the left hand side. Um, I still need to add in these chamfers and fillets and things. Um, let's add a chamfer on that edge and it's a 60 degree chamfer uh, 2 by 60 degrees so we'll take 60 and now it needs a face um, and I can't really remember which face it wants let's try that one does that look right? Uh, no, it doesn't. So I will cancel that. In fact, instead of making that one 60 degrees, I can make edit feature. Um, if I just make that one 30 degrees, I'll get the 30 being the opposite of the 60 degree angle. Um, I'll get the chamfer that I want. That now looks like what's on the diagram. Um, I guess I should have chosen the other face if I wanted to leave it as 60 degrees, but I'm happy with what I've got. Uh, next, this looks more like a fillet in that gap there with a radius of 2, that's fine, apply that and close. And there's a 45 degree chamfer, just a regular chamfer on that edge there, and that is 1 millimeter times 45 degrees. That looks okay. Um, okay, I'm just checking the diagram. I think I've got everything now except that thread. Um, let's just... Uh, okay, so we're going to need a, a sketch to make a coil from. So what I'll do... I'll choose to sketch on that plane there. I'm um, just going to rotate it so that it's in the orientation that I think is more useful. I've pressed F7 there to, to cut at the sketch plane so I can see exactly where the sketch plane is. And now um, the last thing that I'm going to do is project this edge here just as my um, geometry that I can work from to construction off. I've, I've got that now as a, a construction tool and what I want to do is draw a circle somewhere on here. I'll just draw anything for the time being. Uh, it's radius 1.5, so diameter 3. Uh, zoom in on that. I'm going to trim that side of it and add in a line from here to here. So that's the uh, shape that I want, and I want that to be 30 millimeters up from the origin. So I'll put in a dimension. This bit here is pretty tricky, I would say. Um, so, you know, don't uh, feel that it should be obvious how this works. I don't think it is obvious at all. Um, now, if I put in a coil around uh, the profile's been selected, so I can see that's shaded. Uh, I'm going to try and make it around. Um, Y axis, sorry that was the wrong axis, the Z axis, and that's the kind of thing that I want. Um, so something like that is about right, but I want it to go the other way. 
and then what I want is thread pitch equals 10 millimeters, revolutions equals 0 0.25, uh, coil ends, or uh, there's nothing specified, so this natural is fine, and I'll click OK. Um, so that's, I think, the right coil now, and that's one of two. Um, what I might do, I'm just trying to think the other coil needs to go the other way. Um, so what's the, I'm just trying to think whether it's possible to mirror it or pattern it. Um, what I think I'll do is just to draw it again. I've got some time, so I can probably do that. Uh, so if I choose this view here, um, actually I want this view, the left view, start a sketch on the YZ plane there. Um, nope, cancel that. I want the sketch to be I, will, I want to mirror that part across, so what I'm actually going to do, uh, delete that sketch, I'm going to start a sketch on the XZ plane, um, and I'll make a center line that I'm going to use for mirroring, and I will project as construction this part and then I will um, not as construction, not as center line, mirror that across there. And now if I make this not construction and this Hmm. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working either, which is a bit frustrating. Uh, so I'll just draw it. We'll just do the same things that we did before. Project the construction geometry here. Uh, add in a circle of diameter 3. Uh, remember to turn off construction. Again, I'm going to hit F7 just so I can see the, the whole plane that I'm working on. Um, I can trim that side of the circle. I can add in a line connecting there to there. Got to stop making things construction. Um, this is not the most efficient inventor work I've ever done, um, but that is now almost right. The last thing that I need to do is just dimension that the center should be 30 millimeters above there again. Okay, I'll finish that sketch, and now what I'll do is to put in a coil from that sketch. Uh, the axis that I want is that one, and in fact it looks like that coil is going the right way, and I'm guessing it's got all the sizes and things from before, so I'll click OK. Good. OK, I'm happy with that, and in fact I think that's now just uh, looking at the drawing, just checking it over now to see if there's any information that I haven't used somewhere. Um, I've got those four holes and I've used the information about that. I've got these two features which are the, the coils, the, the threads shown um, in a different projection. And I think I've used all the information on there. I think I've used all the information on here. I think I've used all the information on here. I've used that uh, fillet, that chamfer and that chamfer. 
and I've got these holes placed so I think I've used all the information on there. So I'm happy, I think I've now completed the part as it should be and what I will do is save as um, CAD exam 2017 and I'm going to save this as Ben underscore Lishman underscore one two three four five six seven eight uh, and I'll call it task one and that's now saved as a part file so next I need to make an assembly file um, The assembly file looks like that. Um, so I'm going to start by introducing the base, which is part three. I'll ground that at the origin and then I'll add in the other parts. Oh, it says create an assembly from parts one and two. So I'll do that first. Um, I will, don't want to place from the content center, I just want to place from. one and I will place that grounded at the origin and then I also want to place part two um, and I guess what I want with these is now to constrain them uh, I'm going to constrain that axis to that axis that will definitely be helpful Um, I guess I want to constrain that face to that face. And now the last thing is that it's free to rotate. Uh, what I'm going to do is find some planes that I can match up, hopefully. Um, if I choose that X yz plane and let's just see constrain that plane with that plane does that look well aligned yes it does I'm just looking at the diagram and what I can see is that um, I'm just going to click apply there and close that up uh, if you if you look at the diagram, this part that sticks out on the lower part of that subassembly lines up with a slight gap in the in the ribs there, um, and that's what I've got here as well. This part that sticks out lines up with the gap in the ribs. So I'm happy with that, um, and I think I will stick with that as my subassembly. And it tells me to save the file as task to sub assembly uh, one two three four five six seven eight and I'll say yes to all I'm happy with that um, now what I need to do is a new assembly and first of all uh, I'm now going to do what I was going to do before, which is to start with part four, uh, sorry, part three, um, ground that at the origin, and that, that's the base of my assembly, so everything else can fit on relative to that. Uh, now I can place um, part ta task two, part four. Um, and start with the easy constraint. We want axis to axis. Apply. Uh, next, what I might do is try and match up the bosses correctly. That's 
that's approximately in the right place. I can see that those two are going to fit together okay. So I think if I now constrain that axis to that axis, this no longer rotates now, it just moves up and down. Um, and I wonder, can I constrain that face? I, w I want to try and find this lip here, but I'm not managing at the moment. Um, well, instead, what happens if I constrain that face to that face? Um, well, that looks okay. And finally, I'll add in the sub-assembly I made, and I can align uh, axis to axis, apply. Now I'm just going to pull that sub-assembly out. Um, I'll constrain this face to that base, apply. And the face that says LSBU Engineering should be facing away from the from this empty space. Um, so that's approximately right. Uh, in fact, that is now correct. Um, but I wonder if I can do that by aligning some um, some planes. Maybe that plane is useful. Let's just see what we've got on the grounded part. I think if I align those two planes, that's going to work out quite nicely. So I'm going to say constrain that YZ plane. Um, it's flipped it round 180 degrees. Uh, I'm going to say the angle there should be zero. That seems now to have worked OK. Click apply. Um, so I think that's the completed assembly. I'm pretty reasonably happy with that. Um, the last thing I might do if I was working on this assembly is just to try moving things around, make sure nothing moves, that's good, everything's fixed in place. Uh, and I will save as a task to Final assembly and my student number. And it looks like I managed to get a typo in there, so it's not quite spelt correct. Um, at the end of the test, if I've got time, I would come back and just change that in a file management system, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, OK, things are going all right. I'm about half an hour in. And the last thing that I need to do is this drawing here. Um, just looking over it, I guess what I'm going to do is start with this view uh, in the middle, and then I will project that view, that view, and that view, uh, run a section on that view to get this view AA here, find the detail that gives me this view B here, and um, everything else should be reasonably straightforward. Uh, okay, file, new, and I think we're doing bsi.idw, and my base is going to be this one. Uh, imported, well, Let's just think about what scale we want to import it on. 
that looks slightly smaller than what's on the page. Um, and that looks slightly bigger. What happens if I go 1.5 to 1? That looks like a reasonable size, although the um, the section is listed as being at one to one, so maybe I'll just stick with one to one. Um, it may be that my sheet is a slightly different size to what's in the um, in the drawing we're given. I'll go with that, and then we want to project off there uh, that view, that view, and that view as well as that view. Create all of those um, and I need to just move this one up there. I'm just going to see, maybe I'll make this an A4 sheet, maybe that will help things a bit in terms of the scaling and sizing of things. that one needs to come back in. That sort of looks a better size to me. You don't have to do that but it might just make everything a bit clearer. Um, what I'm going to do now is place a, a center line between there and there um, and drag that out a bit because I'm going to use that center line to make sure that my um, section is in exactly the right place. Do I want a section on there? And And I'll just pull that section down so it's where I want it to be. That looks about right. I'm happy enough with that. Move the title over. Um, while we're doing annotations, there are all these center marks there and there. Um, and there is a center line. There's a center line, I guess, between there and there. Hmm, not having much luck with that center line at the moment. Let's see if we can get one between there and there. Okay, center line bisector between there, that point, and that point. That's the one I wanted, and I can drag that out a bit. That center line's looking fine. Um, I still don't quite know how to do this center line on here, but I guess I can just do Ah, that's not a center line actually, that's just a line from a dimension uh, now that I look at it on the drawing. So I won't bother doing that and I'll do another center line by sector on there. Center line by sector between No luck with that either. Okay, well, I'll come back and think about that later. Uh, let's keep on going. It's always good to keep some momentum here. Uh, our detail comes off this sketch and looks... Uh, it's not quite right. 
details off this sketch and I guess it's centered about there um, it has a smooth cutout shape that looks okay to me it sits there yep that looks pretty nice um, except that I got it at the wrong scale so I will undo that um, we want it at three to one. Sits off there. It's a smooth cutout shape. And I guess we'll put it there. Um, just move those over a bit. So there's more room on my page because I've made it an A4 sheet this part has ended up being quite big uh, I've realized I need to make this one shaded um, okay well now I think I'll start putting in dimensions um, that are 7.5 again I've got uh, 7 comma five there that's what's actually on the drawing so um, drawing I've been given so I'll stick with that uh, 3.85 okay uh, I'm not sure what that line is or what it's doing let's gone uh, and there's a dimension here which goes to a point there but I'm struggling to pick that point there uh, that 15 okay happy with that those are oh and there's one more dimension marked on there which is the long dimension from there to there uh, on this detail view I've got a that's a radial dimension um, I'd quite like it to be a diameter how to change between radius and diameter um, well I'll come back to that and think about it at the end Um, and just changing that these numbers were given to um, they're, they're just given as round numbers so I'm not going to include the fact that that's come out as 5.01 and we'll keep on going with those and again I don't really want that to be 9.99 so I'll just change the unit there and finally there Um, so I want to change that radius to a diameter if I can but I can't really remember how to do that at the moment so I'll keep on going and then come back at the end and work on some of the details uh, we've got again these are all going to be radii and I would like them in the end to become diameters I'm just putting in all of these dimensions when I see them there's no particular order that I'm doing it in um, just 
trying to make sure that everything that's given on the sheet I've got somewhere on my diagram. Um, and there's a dimension from there to there, I think. 54.1, that's come out correct. And dimension from there to there, which is 9. And that 9 is shown here on the diagram I've been given. Keep going, keep on putting in more dimensions. That 10.5 is given, and there is an angle dimension between that line and... Um, let's make it there, I think, for clarity. Okay, that 30 degrees is now in. Uh, this section view here has only one dimension marked on it. It's that one. looks fine. There's a text note here which I'll add in which says note okay um, don't want any more text, but what I do want to do is change the field text, edit that. Uh, this one is designed by I'm just filling in these. I can never quite be sure uh, which box relates to which um, piece of information. I think part number is where it says 2D drawing. I can always move these around later if they turn out not to be right, so I'm not that worried about the, the detail there. Uh, and I'll say I've checked it. does that look? Um, everything there is good except the company isn't in, so I'll add in that the company is LSBU. Um, and I can click OK. So the only thing I think that I don't like about this is that I've been, I've got a bunch of radius dimensions where I wanted to put them as diameters. Um, under options, uh, nothing there is jumping out at me. As being relevant, So I can add in the, um, I mean, I could change the text to give me what I wanted. Um, that would be a slightly kludgy way of doing it. Um, what I'll do instead is just, um, hmm. that was the first one that I had. You can see at this stage I've got well, 15 minutes left in the test, so I'm, I've got time to, to spend on the details. I'm not really sure whether whether there would be marks allocated to this or not. You might lose a handful of marks for having uh, radiuses rather than dimensions. Um, I guess maybe it might be under styles. Um, I mention default uh, mm, 
Hmm. Let's just uh I mean it may just be a change in default behavior since this test was set. It may be difficult to get it to give us... Ah, so it's there somewhere. Okay, well, is there any... So I can't see how to do that once I've put it in, but while I'm adding it, it looks like I can do it. Uh, if I right-click while I'm adding it, dimension type diameter, and I'll do that. Okay, so let's go around and find all of those that we didn't like, and I'll just redo them. Um, so this is now off there, right click, dimension type, diameter. Dimension type, diameter. And the other one that I remember is this one here. So. Okay. Um, now I feel like that is pretty close to everything. Uh, all the information that's on the drawing I was given, all the information that's on here I think is now on my uh, drawing that I've created and so I'm going to say that's okay and finally I'll save that as um, task 3 student ID um, and then you've got time if you want uh, to just check everything over and um, sort out that um, typo that I made when I was putting in the name of task 2 and things like that but basically that's now the uh, the test completed to a, a degree that I'm happy with and I think um, if you manage to complete the task to that kind of level you'll be looking at getting close to 100% on each of the three tasks and therefore overall. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, just get in touch with me and ask. And good luck with your with this year's inventor exam.